My name is Hiroki Gondo, a lead developer for Naita. Naita is a small startup company in Japan. We are developing IoT and Lightning Network software. We are also designing hardware to run the software. Agenda. First, I will talk about our recent works. Next, I will explain one of the corner cases of Bolt 2. Finally, I will explain an idea about the, the IoT architecture enabled by Lightning Network. We are developing our own implementation of a board compliant Lightning Network node called Termigan. At the end of April this year, we released the mainnet version of Termigan. This is the fourth implementation on the mainnet. We are aiming for a node that works even on small devices. Termigan works with a Bitcoin D full node by default, but also we are developing an exp experimental SPV mode that works with Bitcoin J. It will work on Raspberry Pi Zero as an independent node. We have announced Lightning Shield for Arduino with the mainnet release. This shield connects Arduino and Raspberry Pi Zero on which Termigan runs. It includes an electronic paper for displaying QR codes of invoices. With this shield, you can add Lightning Network features on your works. Even if you do not have knowledge about embedded development, embedded development, Raspberry Pi Zero, very small ball. And Arduino Uno. This is our Arduino, a shield for Arduino. I try to add demo.
This is our board. Uh, top is the lightning shield for Arduino and uh, electric e paper bottom bottom Arduino is Arduino Uno. Raspberry Pi Zero running a terminal, lightning node, and this shield for this uh, LED loop. Battery from my PC. Uh, sorry, uh, this this is testnet. Request invoice. The clear wallet. Pay to Satoshi. Lightning shield for Arduino uh, and and ePaper and Raspberry Pi Zero Arduino Uno. We use PSI and UART. Tamiga and Elaps installed Raspberry Pi Zero and Arduino Uno. Create an invoice and display a QR code. Of course, you can stack your shield. We also developed a Wireshark plugin called Lightning Dissector for the debugging of our node. Packet capture is a surest way to verify interoperability with other implementations. Using Wireshark with Lightning Dissector, you can see the contents of Lightning Network messages flowing through the network. Of course, you can also check the timestamps of packets and the temporal order of packets. Protocol is Lightning Network. Uh, this, this is Wireshark. Protocol is Lightning Network. 
selected bucket is channel announcement. And all fields of channel announcement are displayed. Node ID 1, Bitcoin key 1, node signature 1, and so on. According to the Vault 8 specification, Lightning Network messages are encrypted with the noise protocol. In order to decrypt them, it is necessary to pass temporary keys to Lightning Dissector. Therefore, the node needs to be able to dump these keys to the specified file in the format defined by us. Other implementations, not just Termigan, can use Lightning Dissector by doing this. This point. Ikuria officially supports this. C Lightning and LND have unofficial branches. If you are interested in this, take a look at the readme file of Lightning Dissector. We will continue to develop and release debugging and development tools for engineers. Next, the Bolt specifications are complicated and difficult. We needed to consider many corner cases. That is probably not enough. We, we will learn more on the mainnet. I will try to explain one corner case of Bolt 2 here. Question, what is the maximum number of valid, signed, not revoked, remote commitment transactions at the same time? Two. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> eh, <laughs> more. <laughs> eh, not two. You probably know there are times when there are two valid commitment transactions on one side. Signing a new one and revoking an old one are not performed atomically. After you send commitment signed message, there are two valid commitment transactions on the remote side until you receive a revoke and act message. When a more variations of remote commitment transactions seen, that happens on network reconnection and message retransmission. When a more a bolt to message retransmission channel reestablish. This is the specification. A node must not assume that previously transmitted messages messages were lost. If it has sent a previous commitment signed message. Note. This is particularly important if the node does not simply retransmit the exact update messages as previously sent. What will happen? After reconnecting, a peer's next commitment number is confirmed by his channel reestablish message. But that value is just his self-report. 
if the peer has received a previous commitment signed message but writes and says he did not, he has a hidden valid commitment transaction. Commitment sign number 10, uh, but he said next is 10, 2. After reconnecting, any uncommitted updates sent by the other side will be reversed. Reversed. The retransmissions of update messages might not be identical. In some cases, you should not retransmit some update messages. An HDLC's CLTV expiry might have already passed. A fee rate that you sent before disconnecting might be not appropriate now. And on message retransmission, a node must reuse the same commitment number for its next commitment sign. When I saw the word reuse, I felt that something troublesome was going to happen. If the peer is hiding a valid commitment transaction and the update messages are not transmitted identically, reusing the commitment number will fork the commitment transaction. Commit number are same, but Signature are different. It will become multiple transactions if the reconnection is repeated. They might also include hidden HTLCs. Note, do not believe in the fear. Once you send a commitment signed message, you should always consider that the commitment transaction became valid, no matter what the peer says. Some corner cases seem troublesome. However, if you understand some principles well, you will be able to handle them properly. We are interested in what happens when Lightning Network features are incorporated into many things. How will that change the, the architecture and ecosystem of IoT? In March 2015, we announced a proof of concept called Smart Plug. It takes a Bitcoin payment and provides electricity for a certain period of time. It was used in a demonstration experiment by charging an electric vehicle with an electric power company. Initially, payments were confirmed by zero confirmation transactions. Then, the testnet version of Termigan was used in the latest version. It requires Wi-Fi and power supply, but can be used as a standalone without relying on external servers. Very simple. Send BTC and receive electricity. Lightning Shield for Arduino is an 
advanced form of smart plug, but it is also a super class. It's an abstraction of the smart plug. Smart plug provides electricity in exchange for Bitcoin, but this shield can be used to make a variety of units. Provides sensing data, provides some actions, provides a token that represents some kind of permission. These independent units are building blocks for introducing market principles inside an IoT system. Let's consider a simple data analysis infrastructure consi consisting of a central server and many sensing devices. This is very simplified. The data from the end sensing devices is collected in the server. It seems that there are no technically difficult challenges. The challenges are in budget and planning. The entity building the system must estimate the, the initial and running costs of all sensing devices in addition to the server. Inevitably, it is a large entity such as a government or a large company with a large budget that can build such a system. The pro project is proceeded carefully, but it tends to be a waterfall model and inflexible. That is tree architecture. Let's change these ordinary sensing devices to the units shown above. The sensing devices become to send data in exchange for Bitcoin. What will happen? There is an incentive for other entities, entity V, to install the sensing devices for the system. Entity C, D, and E. As a result, the server and the sensing devices become loosely coupled. The sensing devices will also provide data to servers, provide data to servers operated by other entities. Simplified. Entity F and G. Market principles will make the placement of sensing devices more efficient. That is similarities architecture. The concentrated and consolidated system will be disintegrated and then loosely integrated again. Multiple entities of various sizes, individuals, companies, public institutions, non-profit organi organizations, etc., can participate in the development process of the system without any permission. Conclusion. We are not trying to tackle large IoT projects. We are trying to create a mechanism whereby a large system is spontaneously generated from a collection of small things and small entities. Using Lightning Network is a great way to connect various stakeholders. We think the protocol is the most important 
so we research and develop by ourselves. It is a way in which things interact. Thank you.